How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Game Junction podcast. We have a special guest with us today. You want to introduce yourself? Smith Azira. That's me. How's it going? Yay. Oh, good. Uh, long Tuesday. Super Monday after Labor Day. Yeah. Yes. So that's when we film this episode, everyone. <laughs> How are you doing, Game Raider? We are here, you know, having a great time, excited to talk about so many amazing things. Another collector, another person who is very passionate about video games, retro games. We are super excited for this, and we can't wait to jump into all of this. But first... Yeah, so TimelessGamer.net sponsored again this episode, and TimelessGamer.net exists to inform and enlighten video game enthusiasts of all kinds. And we had an article that we really liked here recently. Yeah, so one of them, it was OMG, the rest of 2023. So this is where they talk about the remainder of the year and how this could be huge for gaming. So if you are interested in modern games or even retro, they do a little bit of a mix on their website. You could go ahead and check them out. That is our sponsor. And we just love their articles. We love learning about everything that they have. And we'll just jump into this episode here. So we have our guest, and we'll just, you know, talk about it. What is it that you do in the gaming community? Primarily, it's creating content to upload onto YouTube. Uh, I have found that my passion for posting on social media and YouTube, it seems to be I love game display. Um, I'm doing a variety mm -hmm. of content, but honestly, I think finding unique solutions for displaying items has been what I feel like the largest contribution to the retro or well the gaming community not just retro that's awesome yes and much and much that's needed, one thing that sure. we, yeah yes because everyone you know they can collect games they can buy games but everyone displays them and puts them a little bit differently you know they have their own spin on things it's really great to have different ideas on that we all have you know vastly different game rooms you know, gaming setups, everyone that we've ever had on the, the podcast here just has a whole different variety. Some people don't even collect games, but most of them are collectors. So. It's a way to go. <laughs> Stay that way. Right. The yeah. it's, a, it's a rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. collect. Just send everything my way, and um, <laughs> I'll go out there and buy it for you. If you play yeah. your games, you're doing it right. <laughs> yeah, I like play finding games? unique... Or, or, like, I like finding items that are not intended for displaying and then using them in my game room. So, like, I have a shot glass case that houses my Game Boy games. Or, oh, a, nice. you know, I recently did acrylic uh, shelving where it's now where my Switch games are on the wall. That's awesome. Yeah. I just um, picked up something in the last few days yeah. for something just like that. So, I picked up a... It was a gift card holder. Um... This was for a Walmart, but it was like 15 years ago that they used it. It was one that just stood up by like sort of like the registers. But this thing is like mm -hmm. rock solid, super heavy duty. It's not like one of those um, like white cheap plastic ones, but I'm going to use it like for my handhelds. And like it, yeah. it, they set up in there perfect, like all of them. If you set like um, uh, DS Lite up or a 3DS up vertically, like everything fits perfect. It's really cool. I'm like super excited to do something with it because like I'm not super crafty or like things like that, but this can be like sort of a um, first attempt at doing something cool like that for me. So right. it's gonna be like a little project. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> no, that's a smart way. You know, you gotta keep the stuff, reuse it, recycle. You know, just go through and then like. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Captain Planet. <laughs> unite or whatever. I don't know. With our with no. our powers, we unite or something like that. Yeah, something. Our powers. Oh, I Captain Planet. Oh, I just know the rest of the song. Captain <laughs> Planet. He's our he's hero. He's our hero. <laughs> We're old. Oh, <laughs> That's all I got. Yeah. That's all I remember. <laughs> Well, what we've been doing, you've been doing it with the Sonic stuff, the yes. Mario stuff, and then I've been buying, not buying, <laughs> I've been asking to take these from, like, Target. Like, there's so many different styles. Um, they had, yep. like, plush and stuff in these. Um, some, whoop, 
They have some, like, other ones, but you can get all this stuff for free. They would just, you know, break it all down at the stores. But you can put different things in here. Some people, they put their plush in there. Some yep. people put different, right. you know, systems and different things and all these, like, weird little boxes that you can get from, from the stores yeah. for free. You know? Yeah, yeah, I have some Minecraft and Pokemon ones that I got from a Best Buy for free. Oh, cool. Yeah. I wish I would have cared to grab one when like a Minecraft thing was out. At least I I don't think there's any out at my like Walmart or anything right now, but I'm sure at some point that'd be cool. I've got um it's cut off just above camera here, literally where that last CRT is up there, but I've got a giant Pokemon Squishable one. And what I did is put a bunch mm -hmm. of system boxes in it and from like the side this way you can see all of them lined up fits perfect mm -hmm. and i've just found like different ways to like use them they they fit different stuff uh really well one does have um stuffed animals in it and then another one i have like some different like trinkets and stuff and it kind of just holds it and it looks pretty cool i like them yeah i think that's a way to go anything that you could use in a different way and you know what you're doing on your channel too you know showing different things that's that's really cool. That's what people want to see. Everyone wants to start a game room. Some people have a game room, but a lot of people are just trying to, you know, figure out space options and different things, and they want to dive into it. Maybe not as extreme as some of us, but it's it's really nice to have a game plan instead of trying to figure this out. I do not have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was really, really fortunate, because when I moved from Oregon to Florida... I had to rebuild my game room and I had the opportunity to like film the transition. I think it ended up being like a, I think it was like two, possibly three videos of me basically showing how I rebuilt it, how I built the closet behind me, what I used for it, what I did. Like those shelves are deeper than they look. So there's a bunch of stuff behind those games. So I use it for additional storage. I have consoles, I have VHS tapes, I have a bunch of stuff behind my games. So it's all displayed very you know aesthetically pleasing but i'm still able to store the stuff that i don't really want out and about you know yeah. and that's smart to do something like that in your closet so like this room here is like my toy room upstairs there's some video game stuff and then my computer and for the longest time i had it on this back wall where these three huge billy bookcases are and i just had a computer but you can't really put a lot of things over top because you're afraid that things are going to fall onto the computer so right. I just had like a big picture and I was like, that is so much wasted space. So next thing you know, the doors come off this closet here. I put the computer desk fits in there with an inch to spare on both sides, just one inch. And it, it all fit in here. So I'm like, cool. That closet that I just had a bunch of boxes in. Now I have a functional closet. I have more space for all these shelves, can buy more stuff. And I was happy. Just be glad you have room to walk around. <laughs> For I now. I don't know how. Oh my goodness. When's it the, how, or how's, a, how's the Pac-Man bathroom coming? <laughs> well, there's know. a bunch of stuff in the bathroom. Um, oh, no. So I never have publicly shown that part of the basement except for when the abc news crew came over for that hulu episode okay, so it's pretty I said, public <laughs> i said whatever you do don't put that on the camera and they're like haha that would be funny so that part is in the episode it made the couple minute cut that they did and it's like even has it in the bathroom and it's like panning down and i'm like great now they see that i have stuff in the in the shower in the bathtub in the sink yeah that's that's a little bit borderline there, but the goal yeah. is to get everything out and to turn it into a Pac-Man bathroom, a Pac-Man themed. So that will be coming sooner, hopefully, rather than later. That's my dog. <laughs> Sorry. Can you hear him? No, I, I no. Didn't hear him. Okay. no. No, but do you remember when Kenny was on? Oh my God, the notorious dog. Oh yeah, he oh, was like the, the whole time. Hey, there was we, we couldn't hear anything, so like people we were couldn't like, hear anything. No one could hear, even like background. So if anyone listening can hear the dog, it is her dog. He's, but if you he can't hear in the room, <laughs> so funny though, because it's Kenny. Like uh, Bowser are getting pretty upset at a dog. <laughs> yeah, it's the hilarious. voice actor. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh. That was, that was yeah. That. That was a fun episode. Yeah. <laughs> he was so mad at that dog. 
<laughs> and no one could hear the dog at all. Just not, Bowser. Not, just... not once. So I was like, is there a dog? <laughs> like, where's the dog? Like, no nothing. one knew. Dead silent. No one knew. Loved it. Yeah, so what? So, um, I, I do have a question. Um, what is kind of... So you're talking about um, the game room stuff, like sort of making use of like, you know, unique things or uh, cool ways to store stuff or, or, or things like that. What's kind of like the future of that, do you think, with uh, your YouTube channel? I think I want to take the direction of doing more um, DIY, more like display or solutions for like cords that seems to be something i truly enjoy i mean mm -hmm. i'd like to keep it a variety where like sometimes i do a review even though they don't do that well or sometimes i'll do like a top 10 or something like that but for the most part um i seem to it seems like that space of youtube isn't plentiful and so yeah. i definitely would like to do that i i remember when discart was uploading really frequently and i really enjoyed his content and it seems like he's yeah. taken a break and i think i heard it was uh family which is totally understandable but i th not that not i want that to I want do what he was what doing but i'd like to fill a space in that that realm of creativity and trying to think of unique things you know game room designer is not really a job but maybe i can make it uh, a youtube thing it could be so it could be i could maybe, make yeah, it I this could have, make it i might have to hire you when yeah. I run out of more room, I might have to take in some, like, help, help, everything collapsed, and I need to rebuild this. We, we'd yeah. love to have a game room designer friend. Wink, wink. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I, I have spent many years optimizing my space because my game room all, was supposed to be bigger when we moved, and it didn't really work out that way. And although I have a little bit more room than I had, I still had to learn to optimize the space that I had. And that's fine. Like, I'm very yeah. lucky I even have a room. You not everyone yes. gets one. So, you know, I feel like, although it is very entertaining to see the people with the very large collections, I feel like I can kind of uh, satisfy the, maybe the majority of people who maybe only have smaller spaces. Yep. So. No, and that makes sense too, because you can put your own creative touch, your own creative spin on things, and then you can like change up what you have, show what worked, what didn't work. Like there's ever, you know, growing options right. that you can do. You know, yeah. I, I think that's really cool. Game I room like watching videos, videos. Yeah, game room videos do very well. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of people that see those game rooms that are set up, you know, real nicely. Um, and, e you know, even like a very small space, a medium space, like an average space or a big space. They like seeing all that because they want to see how can I set up my game room. So I think like mm -hmm. going down that um, road of what you're talking about is like the way to go. I think that sounds fantastic and there's not many people doing that i don't yeah. personally know of anyone doing that um i'm sure that there are people doing you know a little bit of that but it's definitely not out there like you know a lot of other things. so i think that's really cool yeah no and then like you said too a variety of things that you also like doing you know the top tens and the other reviews yeah. You know, I, th I think it's also cool to do different things that you like as well. It doesn't always have to be geared towards one thing, but, you know, people will know you as, you know, what you want that to be. And then, you know, I, th I think there's plenty of room all across all the socials. Yep. Right. Know, yeah. yeah, I'd like to do some, like, maybe a video soon on some of the unique items that I've come across. Like, mm -hmm. I need to do research on this thing, but I have a Singer sewing machine that hooks up to a Game Boy Color. I have one as well. Yeah. Yeah, like, what, what? That's so weird. And I mean, Retro yeah, Wolf at Siege did like a Nintendo Oddities type thing, and it'd be kind of cool to go down the rabbit hole of the weird stuff, or maybe talking mm -hmm. about Japanese games that you can play even if you don't speak English. You know, those are thoughts great, that have crossed yeah. my mind, um, and things that I've been trying to look into, you know, trying to give out the content that, although it might be not like what the population wants, maybe it's a little bit more niche, but I, I want it to be a little bit more unique. Yeah, just yeah. doing different things because there's so many people who do different, you know, so many people on YouTube, so many people across all these. It's like, how can you be different or how can you put your own spin on things so that you're not doing the same thing every single time? It's the number right. one question, I think, because we, we talk yep. about this all the time and mm -hmm. both of us between Game Junction, Game Reamer, have tried like tons of different things like. 
have kind of put our in it like just tried all sorts of different you know doing like uh topic videos or like you know just about like certain items or like you know when you show your like uh kiosks and different pickups very very well um but trying to <laughs> trying to uh kind of spread your wings and different things that we want to do um and then we're like you know sort of bummed out when somebody doesn't like it you know and right it, it, yep one time doesn't necessarily mean you know anything it could have been pro posted wrong wrong time just you know how we post videos could have been something could have been wrong um and like i really like reviews and i got very disheartened um a few times because did a couple and eh, people didn't care about a couple of them but you just got to keep trying um if there's something right. you want to do you, you can't just please other people you want to have fun with it and do your thing too and not get to the oh it's not getting any views i can't ever do the thing that i really wanted to do or i really enjoy doing or you know like a variety channel is great too those people do very yeah well. well i only had one goal with you too well no two i had two goals one be more involved with the the gaming community and two speak on a panel at a game convention those were the only two things i ever wanted from it so i'm not trying to uh make it a career i'm not trying to earn money from it, it it's just something that like I wanted simple stuff, you know, yeah. um, I think. And if once I reach that thing, maybe I'll have some new goals. But for now, that's pretty much what I was looking for. So it's great. Yeah, I don't think that's unreasonable. I feel like that'll come much sooner than you think. But, you know, what we always say, too, is. You know, this is always about the community, about the friends, about building different things. You know, you're part of like this whole much larger gaming community, you know, when we all went out to siege, like that was like a family. Sorry, yeah. Brandon, but that was like, it was like a family experience. I just yeah, want to say for the, uh, the 50th time that like, I was more heartbroken about that, not being able to go than like anything when I found out, Oh, it's going to be that day that I had already promised I would go to this other no, but you you still but, had a good time. You still yeah, went to had another time. awesome time. convention. Um, it's just you know you can't be in two places at once. But it's yeah. siege. Like it really felt like because that's the first place that I met you. Um, so it's just like you know like being a part of like the big group retro rivals. You know having Steve Craig retro games having Josh there. That was his first convention, right. and just seeing all these like awesome people that. You know, sometimes we've seen before, but most of the time meeting them, you know, in person for like the first time, it's just, it's quite the experience, you know, just meeting up with all your friends, catching up with everyone. And it never feels like there was like a moment where like you stopped or you didn't know this person, like you just picked right up and it just felt like, you know, you were like a part of like the big group, like, you know. It was a very was unique experience because I had all this information, all this knowledge, and even prior relationships with these people that I have never talked to face to face before, and it mm -hmm. didn't even matter. Yeah. Like we were, it, like it just made it like that much more concrete, like the feeling of community and and like YouTube and I like I don't know. It was like an elevation that I wasn't expecting. So. It, it really is it, it's it's a, a thing that you can't really put into words because like you say community and like you know somebody might just think like you know, where you live like your local sort of um area sort of thing but that's not really to me or at least to us is not what community is and and, right. and we have that and and you realize that even more when you get to meet a lot of these people in person like we've had um She's got to talk to a lot of new people that we found on the podcast that she may not have known before. And yeah, since. a lot. I, I didn't know like some of these people because when I first started YouTube, I did not know that there was like a gaming YouTube area. Mm -hmm. I did YouTube for how to videos, how to break dance, how to roller skate, how to right. do front flips <laughs> and roller skates, how to unicycle, how to be like the best mascot, make balloon animal. I was like that person. Like, trying to learn anything and everything um back in you know like my high school days type of thing and college but it's just like I did not know that there were other people it was only until I started posting pictures of games on Instagram like reliving some memories that I saw that there was a community and someone told me hey you should do YouTube and I was like sure I've been thinking about it you know and then you just jump into it but it's like now that I'm in it like 
I'm learning, and then, you know, with the help of Brandon and Game Junction and stuff as well, like, I'm learning about all these other awesome content creators that I had, like, I had no idea about, and, like, you know, everything, too, with, like, you and this whole, like, YouTuber of the Month nomination and, and things like that, it's like, you don't realize how many YouTubers there are, how many smaller, you know, right. channels yeah. that just don't get enough exposure. There's, yep. like... The algorithm pushes out these people that have like, and they're great. They're great people, but yep. some of the people that we like seeing are some of like the smaller channels that you know have great content, great yeah. quality, yeah. great personalities, great you know experiences with, and it's just like a whole new world that opens up. So it's just you know it's like it's crazy to see all of that when you had no idea that this even existed. Well, sometimes it's not even only the small channels. Sometimes I'll come across the channel and they'll have like 7,000 subscribers. And I'm like, how on earth did I miss this? Yeah. Like, yeah. why was I not there? Like, um, Fen Fem Trooper, I think is her name. Um, yeah. Happy Console Gamer just had her on his channel a little bit ago. And I literally had no happy. idea. I had no idea who she was. And then I found her content and I was like, okay, binge watching all of this. Where was I? Like, I missed all of it. So and so, yeah. it's even the big, a little bigger. Like I don't yeah. know what big is, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I just categorize like anybody over like, like you know, I don't know, like a thirty thousand. I what what really is big? But I don't to even us, know. Like, we don't, like, we is just, that like a mid tier? Is that like yeah? A, I, don't, yeah for, I don't know. To me, like I'll often what? say that like you know a, a seven thousand sub you know YouTube channels is a. Uh, Mid tier, but it's really not at all when you think like, about it. It's well, not because like I still think of me as like a smaller channel, and I'm about to hit twelve thousand. But like, I don't consider that big yet because there's so many like huge, you know, yeah, like it channels, is, but so. it isn't. You know what I mean? Like it, it is, but it's it's not. But like, I don't want to discredit anyone because like a lot of hard work and stuff goes into that yes, stuff. But at the same time, right. there's like. Maybe it's like the hundred thousand mark. You know, maybe well, then that's you see like, the the you know the million sub people. That it's just like well, crazy. That's I where you used to. I won't be there. But, but then yeah. some of them are like, you know, man, I wish I could get my channel bigger. And I've heard that, like, literally out of their mouths. And I'm thinking, like, to them, yeah. like, they're like a medium sized YouTuber because they want to be like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio or something. So, like, what? It's so. It's up to you. It's up to the viewer to, to decide <laughs> if somebody is. We're but, all not going to be Mr. Beasts here. I, I, I just want to so say. Happy console gamer. So he he's a very special YouTube channel to me. Um, mm -hmm. Very special. Um, still to this day, to to me, the one of the only YouTubers I think that has really um, like stood on ground to be like a still decent human being or great human being. Yep. Really, he's he's a really uh, fantastic person. Um, but he's been doing it since you know very early on, like second year of YouTube early on. Um, and wow. has built an awesome platform. And so I was, I was so thankful that, you know, I've became friends with those guys. And the first guest we had on was Rob man, which, you know, Rob man from the channel on there all the time, you know, for the past however many years. And when I saw him have Finn trooper on, I was just like blown away. Like this guy is just, you know, still putting people on to this day. And I'm just like, so happy to see something like that. Like there is still like, you know, good people out there. Um, people that are reasonable like he just had a child and like you just see like this youtuber that like he he still has a regular job like and he probably doesn't need to um and like he's he also just, an incredibly talented artist <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> i wish yeah, he did yeah. more stuff yeah i do too yeah he, he's an awesome guy i i just wanted to um kind of sort of say that i thought it was pretty awesome that he had her on i thought that was great that made me so happy when i saw when i saw the picture of her behind the the games like i instantly knew because like she put it on her stuff too i was like didn't even have to didn't have to read the description i'm like because he um we talked about this once brandy um he because we talked about like sort of like backgrounds and things like that and like it was a discussion with thomas but like he's had the same background uh for a long time like exact same background never changed so you can just jump into a video and it could be a review or a discussion or anything and it doesn't matter because like people want to tune in to listen to this guy that is being real so it's like it's so cool i just i love it uh whole tangent but 
Yeah, because yeah. that's like a whole thing, because I often hear, you should really move around the game room. You should yes. change some things yeah. up. But then you think about other people who just stay in a certain area, too, and you're like, well. <laughs> yeah, Jen suggests that for me, and I not my Mario video. Well, no, I guess that one was in front of the TV, too. But in two of my most recent videos, I'm in front of the, t the TV. You can kind of see it. Um, not in front of my closet. My comfort zone is in front of the closet. Um, yeah. But there is an angle that I can do in front of the two TVs that I have. But I, my room's so small, there's not really a lot of room to move around. I guess I, could, I don't know. I have uh, next to no option, essentially. Um, so for me, yeah, it's like trying to, I guess with our videos, you know, convention stuff kind of mixes it up. But we do stuff different places now, um, which is cool. But like, I don't have a lot of that option either. Um, it's like ever so slightly moving it sort of thing or like. Right. Yeah, it's just like not great. I don't have a lot of spin I just option debated putting an <laughs> debated just putting like an X on my floor where I should stand every time I film. <laughs> yeah, like do little foot things like yeah. I'm stand here. Exactly. Like the whole do time. It. Like, yeah, oh, it, like, oh. like dots where my lights go, feet where yeah. my feet go, and just like have a standard because like one day I, that'll I, be it, a famous spot. I'm yeah, calling right. it now. <laughs> then you'll like you'll like cut the carpet or like the floor out. You'll cut it out, and you can get that framed next to your. <laughs> exactly, that'll like, sell for a hundred grand. That would be hilarious. You, that you would make be it funny. like, like long Sam's or, like, feet million. were here. Yeah, and then you can do that. That's that's I, a whole I thing. Actually you purposely, I actually purposely censor my feet out in my videos if they ever get in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, we just like <laughs> tapped into a whole community. Let's let's move on from that. <laughs> I know, like, <laughs> I haven't, um, We don't need that community. That community yet. Um, <laughs> well, it's coming now. I'm trying now. to do like, other communities of things. <laughs> I'm trying <laughs> to, to not. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, let's, if let's I had that, that community, too. You might the, okay, that could be very wholesome. We don't, we have no idea. We don't know that community yeah. like that. Well, that's all you. That sounds like a Brandon thing. So oh, you yeah. can all take right, them yeah. for so the team, and there you go. Yeah, yeah, you're so funny. I'm well, actually anyway. surprised that um, Happy Console Gamer doesn't have more subscribers. If we're being honest, me too. That's why. Like he is, he is so deserving of it on yeah. like so many levels, and uh, I'm surprised to this day that he doesn't have more because he deserves like quadruple. I agree. Yeah, there. I think. Um, you know, yeah, I think it's I would, he's more deserving than a lot more, of people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because a lot of people have uh, came out to be not great people or just aren't good people and very open about not being. Um, and yeah, I think he's he's very deserving, but I and I can't speak for him on this. So I would like to have him talk about it. But, you know, I don't know that he necessarily cares too much. Um, I don't think I, I think, think he's he, just enjoying himself. Yeah, I think he's and I think fun. that's what makes it pure. Yeah, um, yeah, I think I think retro gaming collecting has has was on one single road and then it took a split and now there's two sides of the road and yeah. you chose one or the other. And there's the, you know, the people who are are hunting and selling and pumping content out and yes. doing that. And then there's the people who are hunting, collecting for the joy and just talking about it. And I think there's two yeah. roads and we've yeah. accepted that that is a, a reality now and people aren't giving people flack about it. Because, like, way back yeah. in the day, uh, Rio was a it. dirty word. Dirty yeah. word. And now it's... Yeah. Just well, that became a phrase. Dirty reseller. Like, that was a yeah. thing. And it was, now it's laughed about. Now it it's laughed, laughed about. about. Like, yeah. yeah. So, I like, that road, it took a split, and you kind of, you pick one side. And then you, you choose what you want. And you, you know, be cordial yeah. with it, but... Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. yeah, I feel like um a lot of people are kind of mixed right in the middle of both because like we i mean like for us you know we're friends with a lot of people on both sides i, right, I yeah. definitely think i'm much more on the side of like the actual like gaming and, and like that you know playing games right. and stuff even though i don't necessarily have the time to right now like i'm definitely more on that side like don't care as much about the reselling and the, the, the culture around that but it is very interesting to me and i have done it um, I have a Mercari store. I still sell stuff on there, um, but it's not all like video game stuff, and it's just stuff here and there. Um, not like a full time job for me. But a lot of people have gotten kind of you know mixed in the middle of both, and I think that's probably a good thing. That's how it just got more accepting because like right. it was those people were hated. Was... I mean, look oh, yeah. at the comments that like you know Phoenix Resale still gets now, and that's like 
good. Like, it's a good level of, like, um, right. things now. So, yeah, I don't... I don't know. The I only time I guess. felt a little weird about... Because like, I, I watch I watch Phoenix Resell. I watch Pixel Games Squad. I, I watch those people. I have... I'm one of those people that I'm on... You know, the world's already hard enough. I'm not going to give you flack about any of your stuff. Like, exactly. I do, yeah. do you. Um, the only time I ever felt a little, like, weird is when he finished his gamecube gambit is gambit. That what he called it? Mm-hmm. and then he, he and then he was like and i'm selling it i'm like wait what we just finished it <laughs> that was a little weird for me but hey it's his thing like that's fine yeah. that's what he wanted yeah and that's very yeah, common a lot of people do that <laughs> a lot it's right. like a, yeah, it's a I, thing i'm not gonna YouTubers. name any names yeah i'm not gonna name any names but i just feel personally like i have a lot of like morals and values and things like that mm-hmm. i'm not naming mm-hmm. anyone in particular yeah but some people may be like, hey, I'm looking to buy these things for my childhood. Oh, no, the, memories. The, 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 can the whole water me, bottle. Can you cut me a deal? And then they turn around and flip it. That's where like, where you're like, right. lying. Like, you, you weren't going to keep it. Or like, that's, that's where I have. And I don't know who does that. Like, I'm not naming any names or anything. But just in general, I feel like I may have seen that a few times. Um, and you just. Oh, it's happened a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not yep. going to be like, hey, I really want to deal. Most of the time I pay whatever the person wants for certain things. Like, I even feel weird asking for a discount in stores. I've seen people, you know, make crazy offers like, no, I only want it for this, you yeah, know, right. and then they try and like, you know, bring the prices down. But like, if someone's giving me a really good deal and they're like, you know, I'm selling this to you and you're a collector and I've seen your your YouTube videos and that's why I'm giving you a great deal. I feel like I have to keep that forever. Right. Like, I feel like I'm never going to, like, spoiler, not spoiler, I'm not going to say what it is, but I may have just picked up another kiosk, and I may be picking up some more big, huge items and crazy things, but, like, those will stay with me for probably the rest of my life. Like, they will be someone else's burden, because that person (laughs) gave me such an amazing deal on those items, and I feel like they will never leave, or they will end up somewhere, like, on display for the public, like... They just, they won't be sold. Now, right. when I'm like 87 or whatever, this might be a different thing if I lost my memory. But in my right state of mind, uh, it's always yes. going to stay out there, you uh, know? Well, idea then, because you have a lot of toys and kiosks and games. You can just open up a museum R Us, you know, make it look like Toys R Us, get all your stuff out. <laughs> but it's a museum. Yeah, no, no spoilers once again, but... Um, no spoilers, but always a spoiler. <laughs> may or may not um, be a plan if everything were to fare well, you know, in life. If one were able to afford, like, welcome to my place, nothing's it's not for cheap. sale. We'll, we'll or, just put it that way. Doing things like that is, you know, very inaccessible for that, 9 out that of 10 people. That would be the ideal goal, you know, for for people who collect a lot of big things. Like, ultimately... People don't want to just hoard things and never have anyone experience them. We get joy out of people coming by, turning on the kiosk, picking up their favorite game, playing the items, seeing how people react to these things, grabbing toys in like the toy room and being like, wow, I remember this Megazord or wow, this is so cool. Like that's the stuff that like we live off of. Yeah. So like if we could give that back to the community, that would be ideal. But you know, it takes a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of things to get involved behind it. It costs a lot of money. If you want to do it yourself without investors, that's a whole nother thing. You have to think of ways to bring in money to fund that, where you're not selling the collection. So it's just, it's like an ever-changing idea that, you know, would like something like that to happen, but once again, don't want to spoil and lock something into, oh, this is happening tomorrow, because it won't. Yeah. I do, isn't John Hancock doing a museum? Yes. Yes, that's right. I, I can't even imagine what that would entail. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, there's like a right. hundred ways to do it, too. Oh, yeah. So yeah. there's like a like moving can, one. Just like a game room, talk, right? Like yeah. it's, it, and there's tons of ways to keep it in motion. And Yeah. Yeah. So, and if you want to do a little bit of every single facet, you know, you could do that. And, you know, it creates a lot more work, but that may be something that I would want to do instead of just lock into one thing and 
you know, something. Like, you could talk about these things. We could probably talk for, like, hours on, like, every which way you could go. Profit, non-profit. Right. Having extra things to make income. Moving. But, you know, that's ideally a plan that most collectors would have for people to see the stuff that they have, I would think. You yeah, know? well, I don't, I don't know that I agree with that last part there. The I don't think most collectors care about that like we do. I would say that like well, nine point five out of ten don't. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. like they, they they like to put their stuff uh, stuff on display online. But mm -hmm. I don't know that they want to you know away from their True. where they can grab <laughs> it and play it like you're supposed to play it. Like most people are, you know what I mean? True, because I have recently someone did say something like, "What are you just gonna hoard all this stuff? You should sell it to me." And then the second that you throw out the idea of, well, what if I wanted a museum? They say, oh, there's no money in that. Yeah. So yeah. people are real quick to shut other people down, mm -hmm. which we can get off on a whole nother topic of the toxic <laughs> yeah. community members. Yeah. <laughs> That's all for the episode. Most part, yeah. For the most part, our community, you know, of people are great. You know, yep. we, we all know like a lot of the same content creators. We're all very supportive, very, you know, forthcoming and helpful and, you know that's that's the part that I like. I don't like the toxic stuff. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I think Keep it away. I think if someone said like you like if if someone's like you have to open some sort of business related to video games, I think I would lean barcade because I know a video game store wouldn't work because I would just want to keep the cool stuff. <laughs> And I Here's feel like copy like, of Madden. I know yeah. people that do that, and I I kind of know how they do make it work. But like that is a, that is a thing uh, for sure. Yeah, That's like a great I, point because I would do I think the a same. arcade would be fun, like doing it some would. like where you get to de decorate it how you want and put TVs yep. out and have like retro nights or tournaments. I think that would be more vi my my vibe. Not that I want <laughs> anything to do with any of that. I don't want to be. My, I do not want to be my own boss, but <laughs> I think it would be cool. Dang, you're the first person I've ever heard say that. No, yeah, I, I've never heard, heard that people. before. I I've seen it. it. <laughs> my sister opened up her own business, and I I don't want to touch it's it. It's a lot. Yeah, nope. It's... Yeah, because you don't. It's not like a nine to five job. It's like it never nope. stops. It's your life. <laughs> you wake up, you live, you breathe. That is your baby. Like, yeah. if if I could do something like that, sign me up. I'd do that. I'd be whatever my future <laughs> yeah. thing is called that I can't say and you know gamer aimer like I'd do that full time you know if I could but reality sets in you need money you need to pay bills you need to pay yeah. mortgages yeah you need to pay I also life. struggle with like ADHD so sitting down for long periods of time is not my strong suit <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah I get it yeah but yeah. there's so so many cool things so there's... what specifically are you collecting currently? Honestly, things have been kind of weird since I moved to Florida. So I just kind of wait for things to pop up. There really hasn't been anything in particular. When I went to Siege, I found myself leaning towards buying display items more than video games. I mean, I got a good deal of both. But I think now that my game room is getting pretty full, I'm only looking for the more unique items, not so much like the common stuff. Um, I recently scored a, uh, I think it was like a 24 N64 drawer, right? Is it like 24? Yeah. Uh, for, I think it was 60 bucks, which I felt, I, that was recent. I felt like that was a pretty decent deal. So now I'm just kind of looking for the, what I, you know, the killer, not filler type thing. Cause I used to, I kind of on the reselling thing, I used to buy bundles that I knew I could take what I wanted and then sell the rest and get my money back. I wasn't mm -hmm. usually doing it for profit. I was just doing it so that I could the grab fun. what I wanted I, and I then and then put it back out. And so yeah. I I ended up with a decent amount of shovelware, whereas now I'm trying to be a lot more picky about what I'm picking up because I only... I, I would... It's not that I don't want to. It's just I feel like I should probably not grow outside of my room at this time. So, which I, yeah, kind, of, I'm, I kind of already have a bunch of crap in the guest room, but that's besides the point. Yeah, no, I feel like a lot of people go through that. So, like, we all go through different stages, like, in our collecting. Like, when you first start out, you want everything. Then you start, like, seeing what works, what doesn't work, what you like, what you kind of yeah. want to hone yeah. in on. You, it looks like a lot of Nintendo 64-based stuff. I mean, tons of other stuff, you know, every yeah. other yeah. thing, too. But, like, is, is that something that you, 
like to, I guess, like hone in on like some of your favorites or? I really like collecting for the N64, which is wild because I didn't grow up with one until later on in life. And I'm thinking this might be either right before when I got a PS2. I, I feel like I was late to a lot of different things. Because uh, I was born in 91, but my first console I played on was an NES. Then it was a Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. And so my it was really strange. I, I, was, I, I did the same thing. Yeah, yeah, I was born in 93, and my first was a 2600. Then I got an NES. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, a little I was bit right uh, behind on the A time. little bit more. Yeah, and so yeah. I somebody g gifted me a PS1. And this had to have been when the PS2 must have been out. Because why would someone just give you a PS1? I immediately yeah. took mm -hmm. it to school. And I traded a kid my PS1 for an N64. Like I, I was already like, it, like, yeah. yeah, I Yay. like I legitimately used to wheel and deal on on the bus in middle school. It was really bad. Wow. Like I, I would, I trade, I gave my lunch money for a Pikachu bed, set, like a Pokemon bed set. I showed up with a big garbage bag of like blankets, and I don't know was why it my the mom white didn't one? ask me. The white one. It was one? the blue one. Ah, oh, dang. Okay, yeah, I had the white. The one. light blue. I yeah, I had the um, the curtains too, the matching set for the curtains, yeah. Yeah. and there there was a few other things that went with that. Like yeah, there was a was full like, room set you could get. I, was, I, I did not know on. what what was in my head in middle school, but I was straight up taking my lunch money and and buying games and like Nintendo stuff from kids on the bus. And I have no idea why my mom wasn't like, "Why do you keep asking me for lunch money?" <laughs> I did that. It was all. I think pretty much Pokemon cards. Sometimes it'd be like yep. some Game Boy games mixed in, but. I was all Pokemon cards at that. I did the same thing. Lunch money would go yeah. not eat, and and they would call and be like, "Hey, you know, they're not getting food, or you've got he's got a tab." Like, <laughs> and my crazy. mom gave me a tag, and I'm like, "Dang it!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, see, I like packed for lunch, but I would bring my Pokemon cards to school. And one time I traded, and it was for a fake Pokemon card, and oh, I didn't no. know until I got home, and I was so mad at that kid still do to this day and it was it was heartbreaking so ever since that point from when i was a kid i i don't really do a lot of trading or anything anymore now i hoard everything I mean, that, and yeah, that is the that. one moment Dang. that defined my entire life oh uh, that's it okay was, yeah <laughs> Yep. I've done some dumb stuff too. I uh, traded my Pokemon Yellow for an Exodia head card that I then took to the mall and got twenty bucks for. So we've all been there. I remember when wow. I completed that Exodia set. Uh, I did that by <laughs> trading on the bus too. But I ended up getting. I want to say one of them. I want to say like the right arm or something or whatever. One of them ended up being a, a knockoff card. There were shops here like that would sell those. Like um, they were like decks, full decks of like you know just. Bootleg cars for Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon it was very common, and like yep. my parents would grab those or whatever from the mall or something. Like it was always those shops at the mall that would have them, and yep. uh, yeah. they would grab them and like, yeah, I got you some Pokemon Great cards. Deal. Like this is and ten dollars. Yeah, you like, get a hundred so, cards. Jeez. Yeah, they think yeah. it's like such a great, amazing deal. And instead of Pikachu, it's like sneeze a chew, and you're like, <laughs> no, this is not right. Why does this it say was, electric squirrel? <laughs> why is this Fartizard? <laughs> yeah, I collected Pokemon cards excessively. I didn't really play the game, but I played Yu-Gi-Oh. Like that was yeah. that I did that for a few years. Um, I used to go play the do the TCG events for Pokemon when I was younger, but when I got a little bit older, I started like playing uh, like local tournaments with Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff. So I didn't play it when I was I didn't play Pokemon like later on. I stuck with Yu-Gi-Oh, but I played it yeah, early yeah, on. Brother... Those competitions for the gym badges were here in Columbus, Ohio, so it's pretty cool. Oh wow! Yeah, my brother did the Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. He had a little bit of Pokemon, a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh, and then I just like. Collected and played a little bit, like locally, um, with some of my friends. Pokemon, but... and then he borrowed my Game Boy Color with Fire Red, Yellow, and Blue, and he took it to karate, put it in the cubby. Some kid walked out with it, and uh... ever since that moment, I was very upset because I lost my childhood. Um, those games, it was very upset. I have a lot of trauma, apparently. When it comes <laughs> to yeah, I'm sorry to realize that. Dang. Oh, I guess I gotta throw away my 
game ram or pen that for some reason is always <laughs> sitting here on my desk. I don't know why. I mean, you, were, you weren't one of the episodes. Yeah, I was aware. Well, that's I got like a couple of the stickers and things sitting here, but I like I held it up here. I was like number one fan. No, no, but look, I have. Oh, that's awesome! That's all, I love it. Yeah, I got some a bunch of that sitting here, and not intentionally because I, I also I, have. I also have my card. That's oh, wow. <laughs> awesome. Oh, you put it in one of the... Okay. See, I need to do that. I haven't even put one in there, but no, I just got the contact for right. the grading guy. So I, I'll... It doesn't uh, fit right. We'll it, have to do it, that. Like, it bends it. It's it's for like a curved one. I would not uh, recommend yeah. it. Oh, yeah. I ended up doing. That's yeah. funny. I <laughs> to, answer your, to answer your question a little bit more specifically, I usually am... I'm not looking for anything in particular. I'm just usually looking for the generation that nobody cares about. Okay. So, you know, like right now I'm keeping an eye on PS3, but that's probably going up. Xbox 360. I bought a PS5. Yeah. I only have like two games for it. So sometimes I try to look for good deals on that. Um, I've been buying PS4, but really I, I'm usually never <laughs> focusing on just one thing. I'm just, uh, it. I very rarely focus really hard on one thing. Like the N64 <laughs> Fantastic series was over a span of like, two to two three years they kind of just fell in my lap most of them from the same person so nice so you're actively yeah, collecting uh, 2600 games and you go for like uh, set. yeah, yeah since I, no have, one's down after that. I actually have one of the original yeah. sunnyville 2600s that i found at a thrift store in my local town it's for like cool. 14.99 yeah. um uh but i the only i only have well i have three uh atari 2600s but i I probably won't be collecting any more Atari stuff or anything close to that generation, or, or like the Jaguar. I'm just, I'm. It's not my thing. That's okay. We don't, we don't. We don't. We don't blame you. Yeah, I just I, can't, I, I do. can't do it. Dang. Like, Wait, like, like, on all the good uh, systems. Like Pitfall and Hero, uh, and that's it. Like I'm not. I'm not much on it. He's uh, like, not grab. the Jaguar. You had to throw uh, shots at that yeah. one. That's well, my, my favorite. My baby right here. This is my the, probably my favorite thing I own in my entire collection. Really? Jaguar I swear. Drive. Yeah, I love it, man. I love I I do like Atari. I give uh, crap about the 2600 stuff because, I mean, like, let's just be real. Like, uh, I I get it. Um, first Riveting console, graphics. Console. Yeah, Ahead it's, of its time. It just, there, there's things in life that don't quite hold up and it's the same for, like, you know, TV and, and, and anything that Maybe don't totally stand the test of time, but it's an important part of history. Very important part of history. Yes, uh, history. yeah, very important. Uh, yes. I do, I do appreciate the old stuff. And I think and, and I, I still am nostalgic it. for it, but it's not like in the same way as like an NES or Super Nintendo. Yeah, because mm -hmm. like I think if I if one was in my household, I'd feel a little differently about it. But I didn't get a twenty six hundred to like. I, honestly, it might have been within the la less than six years ago, maybe, maybe yeah. seven. Like, I, I'd be honest with you, like, for us, because, like, we are a little bit older, but honestly, like, the 2600 was not even close to our time for games. It wasn't. Systems. And I and didn't the, play it until I started collecting either. The flashback is the only reason, like, most people our age should really know that. If they're, like, you know, not into gaming like us. Like, that's mm -hmm. probably the only thing that. That's the only reason. I wonder how many Atari, like, collections I have in my. Like for the PS One, the PS Two, like they always ported oh, the yeah. like Atari classics. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure it was sure on everything. It. <laughs> yeah, it was on everything. I mean, PSP. Like, now you can get the like, new one coming out. Right. Yeah, for what? 150 bucks or something. Oh uh, well, she's talking about like the collections on the system. So it came out. Yeah, but I'm just, like, I'm just saying for uh, yeah, everyone yeah. listening, you can get the new one that's coming out. Yeah. Just uh, add it to your collection set. 140 your bucks if you want to get a new compilations. One. There you go. Yeah, Build whatever. A sweet it is. 2600 collection. Yeah. 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 So what are you what are you playing? What types of games are you currently playing or enjoying and what systems for? Uh right now, uh, right I've, now I've been playing I'm... Yakuza Like a Dragon oh. on the PS5. Uh Guardians of the Galaxy on the PS5. Wario 4 oh, okay. for the Game Boy Advance. Um Oh, and then Henry Hatsworth for the yeah. Yes, those are the four games I'm playing right now. Oh, oh, I, I kind of bounce games. around. Yeah, I have played Wario Land Four so many times because uh, that there was game. A, there was a period in time <laughs> it was like 
one of the few uh, GBA games I had. Like I played through it. I, all all the siblings, all of us played through that so many times. We yeah, all had was... save files and ran through them, man. It was awesome. I honestly thought of a hot take the other day where I was like, I think handheld Wario games are better than handheld Mario games. I I wouldn't. Yeah, disagree I think with they that. are. I, I mean, that. look, I if you that. even go back to to Wario Land on the Virtual Boy, that's a great game. Yeah, yeah, that's like, a great all, one. They're all the Wario Land it's games are good great. Too, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Like I wouldn't argue like console, although Wario games are. I feel like they're really underrated. They, I know he's like are. a name, yeah. but he's under. That is underrated. Like Wario Land uh, Shake I, It. Have you ever played that on Wii? That's really uh, good. I play like I played it for a moment. I don't own it, so um, I have to get it and into my collection. But um, Wario, like Wario, where smooth moves was like one yep. of those hidden gems yep. where I played with my friends, and we ended know. up staying till like two o'clock in the morning because of that silly game. It's fun. Totally. quick it's paced, competitive. It's like a great party. Like it's a great game. Yeah, for I think I think people. so too. I'll, I mean, yeah. honestly, so the only one I haven't played is that game in Wario, which is the Wii U one, right? Because I have the the switch. That one's getting oh, really yeah. expensive. That's the only one I haven't played, and I played all the weird oh. ones, like the photo one and Wario. Um, the the touch, I think it's called Touched. Um, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. all all those all, the weird DSI ones that came out. Um, but for some reason I haven't played that one. But those are all fun, man. I think they're great. I love so it. I don't Spongebob squiggle pants. Yes, she keeps promoting this uh, the Wario Wii. clone. <laughs> it's just like WarioWare. It's Spongebob, though, and you use, like, the you draw. Um, and oh, it's the best. Okay. little mini Spongebob ones, like a boating, a plankton, plankton. Like, you have all, like, the little characters. So, like, if you like Spongebob, you can get it. So, if you don't want to spend all that money on the Wario games, spend, like, less than $5 on the Spongebob one for the Wii, and it gets the same point across. <laughs> And, and yeah. who would have known, right? Like you just totally checked that out on the whim. Like you were yeah, like it was amazed the, about it. It was the on the day in gaming that we did, like a short. It was the on the day in gaming because I I do those across the channels. And um, one day I just picked up the SpongeBob Squiggle Pants, and I was like, on the day in gaming, this game released today. And then I was like, this is a hidden gem <laughs> <laughs> discovered by yours truly. It was so funny because. Yep. That's been brought up in probably like ten podcast episodes and, and like, like other media. Yeah, two Retro Wolf eighty eight videos. One where I mentioned it to him to go find. He couldn't find it. One at Southern Fry Gaming Expo when I gave him the copy of it. You know, several videos later. And you know what? YouTubers don't impact the price of games because the game is still the same price and might have actually went down, <laughs> even though I recommended it like fifty seven times. <laughs> So, boom, mm, hot take. It went down. I don't know that I would say that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> now it's a 99-cent game. Jeez. Now it's like a dollar less. <laughs> oh, man. Jeez. That's funny. I love it. Yeah. We got any other uh, bases to cover? Just anything that you want to, uh, you know, let people remind you again. Anything that you have in the world. Uh, you it's just my channel. Out. Yeah. I don't know what I'm happened. Back. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> she knew. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just, just Samantha Zero. Uh, that's my handle on everything. I'm usually active on Instagram, YouTube, a little bit on TikTok, not too much. Um, things in the works. I mean, I've got a few ideas floating around. I'm hoping to do more collaborations. Uh, I think a video I would like to do soon, which is. Uh, definitely because of Fem Trooper is talking about my video game journey, you know, where I started, what I've done, you know, what kind of made me the gamer I am today. You know, I, I missed, uh, RPGs, like, really weren't in my life for a long time, and, like, it's very much because your parents buy you the game, and you get that game, and you don't, you don't play anything else because you don't have your own money. And see what yeah. happens when you get your own money. So that's yeah, you trauma. Have, you have addictions, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Other than that, um, I kind of just do what I want when I want to. So I, I don't have anything that I know right off the bat that I'm planning on doing soon. But I know that I'm going to be re releasing a video probably next week. Um, I nice. am currently up as one of the people for YouTuber of the month on uh, what was it? The hold on, I had it up. The real, the real bit, the real wars. bit wars. That's wars. What it was. Yeah, yeah. 
on the real bit wars um i'm up against three other channels and so if you guys want to take give that video a view and check out all four channels and give a vote i'd appreciate yours if you like my channel and congrats on that that's yeah thanks awesome. yeah that's really awesome love it yes. well we appreciate having you on and we'll have to have you on again i'm sorry we couldn't get you on a live episode uh things are crazy trying to plan all these out we've got sort of opposite schedules and just making everything work we just do what we can <laughs> right yeah so. no i appreciate it i have more. fun yeah there's there's always and, more we're not going anywhere so we'll, we'll, we want to do community ones too where we yes. bring some people in so stay tuned everyone for that but make sure you guys check out our description below make sure you follow her vote for her you know check out her amazing content the awesome game room that you see behind her if you are watching and not listening so make sure you guys check out all of that and we appreciate everyone watching and stopping by and you know, sharing this. Have a great night. Thanks, guys. Thanks.